the three S's of hyperkalemia. When you have a patient with hyperkalemia, you have three jobs. Stabilize the cardiac membrane, shift the potassium into the cells, and you need to sh shed the potassium out of the body. If you have a patient who has ECG changes, peak T waves, widening of the QRS complex, your first job is to make sure that that person doesn't go into a fatal arrhythmia. To do that, you're going to use calcium. Calcium works almost instantaneously to stabilize the cardiac membrane, but it does this much for your potassium level. Now that you've stabilized the cardiac membrane, you have 45 minutes to an hour to do something with that potassium. So step two is going to be to shift it into the cells. And we're going to be using our sodium potassium exchanger to make that happen. We're going to use things like albuterol that's going to work on the sodium potassium exchanger, not dinky ampules that you get for an asthmatic. You're going to give 10 to 20 milligrams grams to that patient to push that potassium into the cells. The other thing that works on the sodium potassium exchanger is insulin. Just don't forget to support their glucose level. And if there was some old funny guy that told you about bicarbonate, just forget it. It doesn't work. Step three, you need to get that potassium out of the body. And there's three ways you can do that. The first is if the person makes urine, give that person diuretics, make them pee out the potassium. And if they don't make urine, then you only have two ways. The first is to make them poop it out. Giving a patient a potassium binder is going to help to pull potassium out into the stools. And the final way, the old fashioned way, just get them set up for dialysis. So now you know about